Philadelphia. Hello, everybody. We are live at Vince Quinn's apartment, if you can believe that. Taylor Kodatis uh, to my right. I am John Barchard. This is Bell and the Birdman. And uh, Howie Roseman's been busy. So let's waste no time, my friends. Slay is back. Bradbury's back on a three-year deal. Fletcher Cox decided to come play with us for $10 million. And Howie Roseman saying uh, there's $15 million in dead cap, so I'm already... I'm already $5 million ahead, and you're you're playing on the roster. Some people are upset about it. This son of a bitch is somehow mad at Rashad Penny's uh, yep. contract. Yep. Um, there's probably still more news to come, so we better talk fast before any breaking news comes around. Vince Quinn, how are you feeling, my friend? Comfy. <laughs> Very comfy. It's my apartment. I'm laying out on the couch. Yeah. Like, this is this is great. We I need love, to do this I more. love your apartment. I think this is, should be just be the new studio for. Well, yeah, I, honestly, I, yeah. She, well, she's not here during the day, so we can do whatever <laughs> the hell we want. Uh, so yeah, whenever you guys want to record here, you're certainly welcome to. But, dude, I can't, we were going through all this stuff. I'm, I'm looking through before we we sit down to do this, and I'm like, okay, how we signed all these deals? I've seen like multi track or, or not multi track, like multi year structures of the yeah. contracts or, and, and how this stuff shakes out. He's broken the system. <laughs> Howie Roseman, he, he's broken football as I know it. I mean, it is, it's crazy to think about this. He's Neo in the fucking Matrix. Like, Howie Roseman goes from void contracts didn't even exist. Void years didn't exist until Howie Roseman. So he brings that, that in. Did he bring that in? There? I swear to God, I had right. never seen it anywhere until Howie had void years in deals. He's a fan of it, for sure. So, so. He, he does it a lot. Uh, there's a couple other teams that have done it since, but he started it and made it popular at the very least. And as all that stuff starts to happen, it's like, okay, he's, he's working the books and he's getting the cap numbers down. He's stretching these hits into bigger years or more years so you can sign more contracts, right? Here's the crazy thing about this offseason. You look at all that dead money from void years, and I just assume that's happening. It's, it's like $53 million, and you're like, oh, shit, they're going to lose all these guys. It's the whole defense, and they're going to pay all this dead money to watch them go as free agents. It's not even like they're cutting these guys and eating the dead money. They're just walking away. The fact that Howie Roseman can sign all of these people and save money. He just kept one of the best rosters I've ever seen in my life, mostly together. It's it's unbelievable. And he's doing this with, with the comp picks because you're getting all these comp picks. We could talk about that. They've already hit their limit for next year. So why not bring all these guys back and have them hit the market a year later? You could get more comp picks. I mean, it's just like he's he's broken the system. I don't even think he's broken it. He's just too good at it. He's just too good at it. Uh, and a lot of this, well, well, let's start with one, why I like the Rashad Penny stuff. And then we can, we can oh, just start there. Fine, yeah, but, sure. But this allows you now to do a bunch of different things. One, um, this is not a different philosophy than I think the Eagles have invested in since Howie Roseman's been here. But you pay the corners, you, you pay the safety, I'm assuming. I'm assuming the CJGJ uh, yeah. thing is coming because of all of this. Uh, Slay wants to stay here. Bradbury supposedly taking less. There's a lot of people that, you know, know what's going on here. If you were to look at what Howie Roseman has done, right, even going back to that, let's go to back to 2021, what was the thing that probably held them up the most from do, being a playoff run at all, a contender? Dead money, right? Like, they had a massive amount of dead money. and You heard everyone that year say, Man, we're so close. Jalen Hurts, all uh, we're this cl we're so close to being a great team. If they didn't have that dead money problem in 21, we're probably talking about a Super Bowl run then, aren't we? Because, you know, that that probably uh, that Steven Nelson money that you probably needed for, for James Bradbury or whoever that ends up being is probably there. So you're remembering, one, we're trying to keep track of how we look. You know, has how he learned from his mistakes and all this. And I can emphatically say, yes, after a Super Bowl run, I, I don't believe that paying the old guys, paying Slay and paying Bradbury, oh, they're above their, yeah, no shit. And the same reason why Fletcher Cox is here for $10 million instead of playing against you or, or you know, somewhere else for 15 and you're paying for it, that's exactly what you're doing here. Now that dead cap's gone in a race, you have, Active players that are doing it, they're all on one-year deals. So if Fletcher Cox does walk away and land another contract, well, that's another comp pick for 2024. Or Slay, there you go. Now you can fully do it. You've cut him. You've retained him again. You have that comp pick ownership. The same thing with Bradbury when I'm assuming his contract is going to be done. Uh, yes, they're all above 30. But we had no complaints. And I'm just going to go right back to Fletcher Cox here for a second. We had no complaints whatsoever about Brandon Graham being a rotational defensive end 
above 33 years old. And now we're starting to complain about Fletcher Cox is hitting that mark where he will absolutely settle into a rotational role this year, more than likely. And if he's not, we're in deep shit. Um, but that, that I think, is setting up all for the future to grab new guys now in the draft, have comp picks later to reinforce your dumb linebackers that you're losing or whatever it is. And more importantly, Vince Quinn, running back, which you should be thrilled about paying a guy that, if he stays healthy, is probably uh-huh. better than Miles Sanders, which is... <laughs> Going to be very tough to do, and I agree with that. I, I don't. I don't expect uh, a full seventeen games out of a shot. Oh, you don't. But the man Why? is making six hundred thousand dollars, under a million dollars, and is going to be more, hopefully, around the same, if not better effectiveness because of this offensive line Ugh. because of that now Rashad Penny if he does get healthy Vince Quinn yeah can go make a shitload or whatever that means with the running back market nowadays because our boy Miles Sanders is only getting five million dollars a year from the Panthers but one year running backs who are great will want to play here as long as that offensive line is good you don't have to have long-term contra- contracts with running backs they will go get paid. You know what that means? More fucking free comp picks every single year. So, yes, I don't know if how he's broken it, but he is the first one in line and is putting a ton of resources to numbers, analytics, and hasn't moved off of that since 2016. Now, tell me why you're upset about Rashad Penny, you evil bastards. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 do you mean why should I be upset about a running back that doesn't play because he's oh, hurt all the on. time? Isn't this the whole reason why we talk about you never draft a running back in the first round? What's the value? The, the, it's the injury risk of all these different guys. And it's, it's not just the player themselves. Even if he shows up and he plays well, it's a one-year commitment. Like, whatever. Uh, and again, the likelihood's garbage. But like, especially when it goes to the first pick stuff, it's the opportunity cost. It's... Who are the other players that you didn't draft because you took that running back? And in this case, it's just, who are the other running backs? Like, the running back market is way less, it, and, and really, it's way less than people expected it to be, but should have seen because of the draft. So oh, it's, it's that and the free agency thing hitting together, which you've been telling everybody for a while now. And yeah, like Zeke being cut, all these other people in here, it's a... It's a disaster for Miles Sanders. It is. He's worth at least $7 million in a normal year, but there's so many guys on the market that were competent players, and there's so many guys in the draft that none of these guys are worth shit. So that's the problem for me is, like, I looked at Jamal Williams, and I mentioned him, like, at the trade deadline. I've been all in on Jamal Williams for quite some time. $12 million, right? Then he gets signed for That's nothing. Three years, $12 million for a guy that runs like that with this offensive line, who's been healthy, who doesn't have a massive workload, and he's around the same age as Penny, I would pay that for Williams in a heartbeat. Like, that is a no-brainer to me. So that's the kind of guy that I think about. Is it as, uh, is Alexander Madison as flashy? No. Solid runner, hard runner, would have a great offensive line, wouldn't cost all that much. James Robinson is Miles Sanders. They look the same well. when they run. He Except doesn't one can cost catch. anything. Well, yeah. So that Ryan, that's Robinson. Like, Shad can catch too, by the way. So I, so I would take so like that's part of it for me. Is there's just so many other guys that I think would be solid players that have way more of a likelihood to play, and I would just rather have guys that play. I mean, you're betting on a, a guy with an injury history that's tremendous, and he's in his prime. That this is not going to get better. Like it, what? What tells anybody? He fractured his fibula last year. So, but so is, great. But, but this is, a, if he's in a rotational heavy backfield, which this is going to be. Yes. And by the way, they're probably still going to draft or take a UDFA running back. They're going to have to for should. camp bodies alone. I don't, I, this, this thing that I think some of us, like Vince Quinn over here has in his head, where this guy is going to run like just as much as Miles Sanders did, who probably ran more than he should have in this offense. Honestly, like Rashad is there to, he is the perfect guy to be in shotgun. All those years of having, well, Miles got to be under center. He's got to have a guy under center to get going. And like going, ah, God, I'm so sick of that. Rashad to me is a more typical back on what you would need next to Jalen Hurts, especially when you're going to dra- draft now Zach Charbonnet, I'll say in the fourth or fifth round because of how the running back market has shot out of here, you know? And I'll even say this, I, I, <laughs> oh boy! I I, I would, I, I like it would surprise me. I want, two things would surprise me. One, him staying healthy the entire year. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Two, what wouldn't surprise me 
either is if he ends up having way more rushing yards and touchdowns than Miles Sanders did here last year. So if Dickerson slides over, you've got Cam Jurgens like right next to Kelsey. I mean, you can say it's 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 a worse offensive line because it's a year older, or you can say the defense in the corners, oh, it's a year older and it's not going to be the same. And I feel like that's everyone's basic argument about the re-signings, Rashad Penny, Kelsey coming back. Like there's it, there, this was the best roster you ever saw. Yep. They got rid of the stuff that you knew wasn't going to be here anyway with the Kaiser. Linebackers. And all that. Linebackers. Yeah, that's what you, you know. argue. So uh I'm I couldn't be more excited heading into the draft for how it's set up. And if you want to be mad about Rashad and his injury history, welcome to football, man. <laughs> Especially that position. It's less than a million dollars on a one year. I know. Deal. I, again, it's the other players they didn't sign more than it's Penny ah. himself. I, I just think you could have gotten somebody that can actually play and so many running backs can get five and a half, six yards of carry with this team. I really believe everybody it. can. That's that's the great well, that's, thing. Well that's yeah, so get anybody. Get it give me anybody that's cheapest gonna stay guy. on the field. <laughs> did. They got the cheapest guy, and for somebody that has preached to me for years, don't spend money there. They have not spent money there. Well, they have, and, and like Boston Scott's back for pretty much nothing. You still have gained well on a fifth year contract, as a, uh, so like that all that all plays. And yeah, I think they draft a guy. There might be a UDFA that's like actually really damn good this year. So I'm not putting Austin Eckler out yet. By the way, oh, pff, oh, I'm, no. Once, I'm, the, once he's not traded and is available on the market, which I'm assuming is going to happen here, or even if you want to make a trade for him, a rotation of Rashad Penny, Kenny Gainwell. Austin Eckler, and then occasionally Boston Scott gets in there and you have Trey Sermon on the inactive or however it goes. I'm down. What a great four-man rotation of running backs. Fantastic. Okay, at first I, I wanted to say no to that, but I'm going to feed your fantasy because now I'm actually buying it. Feed it. So it, if he's not going to hold out with the Chargers, then go and trade for him. That's what, I'm just, why not throw one of your sixths? To them and say, and they'll probably say, go, go bleep yourself. He's worth more than a six. And just make it conditional. They'll get something out of yeah, it. Yeah, or trade him one of your fours from next year because you're going to have a bunch of comp picks anyway. So who cares? Like, do something like that. You could do it during the draft if it drags long enough. But then you do that. You get him here for the year. You say, look, dude, you're here for the year. Play great. We're going to take care of you. This line's the best you've ever seen in your life. Then you get the comp pick back. So it's like yep. a, it's a boomerang that has Austin Eckler on it. Like that's that's a pretty good place to be. <laughs> and not to whether it's positive or negative with my next statement here. Boston Scott's agent, our good friend Cameron Ruiz, also the agent of one Austin Eckler. So there's there's connections in the room. I'm just saying, Cameron, if you're listening, I'm sure him and Boston would get along just fine, and and uh, and I'm all for it. But I don't know, man. I uh, I, I I think this team is is set up great. And and whether or not you want to believe in Rashad Penny, we'll find out in a few short months. Yeah, but like for the people that are upset, because because there was this whole thing of like there was this big release of like, oh, how he isn't doing the same mistakes that he made in 2018. He's learning his lesson. He's not signing all these guys, and then all these guys get signed, and like, oh well, shit. I guess well, actually, that was all wrong. So but that's so, because that's just the, the bullshit Philadelphia fan trying to make ourselves feel better about a player going out, isn't it? Like. Slay looked like he was going to go, and everybody's like, "Well, he did have a bad half of the year." And yeah, is, you know, it's like they do save eighteen million dollars, and then all of a sudden, when there's a chance to have him back, it's like, "Oh yeah, best best corner." You know, no, no, this is totally great. Bradbury's not going to be here, and is he really worth it? He's through. No, no, he's, he's, but that's what I think's happening. Yeah, right, but if it, again, it's like if signing all of these guys reduces your cap, <laughs> then this is the biggest no-brainer yes. of all time. And I would assume that because they're making that money and it's bringing down the void dollars as well for this year, it's going to reduce it for following years. That's something I got to look into and figure out. But, man, I mean, it, it, what's the harm? Like, it's not like these are big commitments for multiple years. It's one more year. You're running it back. Jalen's money, whatever that's going to be, is not hitting this year. So you can do all this, get more comp picks when you've already got the max comp picks. It all piles together. And now, like, my, my whole argument just a couple of days ago was, like, I don't care what the defense looks like. Have a top five offense. That's all I give a fuck about. Now, they might have both again. <laughs> they, I mean, they, they really could. I, I don't see why not. When you got all this stuff together, all these draft picks, they can be aggressive if they want to go up and get a guy. Mm -hmm. It's looking more and more. I mean, there's a lot of shit with this, but the Jalen Carter could be dropping. And if they want to move up <laughs> a couple of spots and get that guy, like, that's totally doable, it looks like. So I'm just thinking... Man, they could do whatever they want. We still don't know what's happening with, with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Like, there's just so much he's to good. happen. He's, 
there is no question in my mind that he's going to be here and signed and delivered before the weekend's over, right? You don't try and do this Houdini shit with Slay, and Bradbury doesn't take less with the intention of him not being behind them, right? It only makes their probably careers prolonged. Uh, would get Slay paid one more time if he has a really good year or retire into the sunset. Uh, and I agree with Taylor Credatis, by the way, that Jennifer needs to start her own banana pudding stand or whatever it is because she's making Howie, uh, you know, this stuff. And, and everybody wants to be here. And the reports are our guy, the second wave of Dick Vermeil, Nick Sirianni, is a big reason why. You buying into that or is that just PR stuff? Uh, they, the, I, I, I think it's I'm buying into it. Chemistry is a real thing. They love it here. The Slays love it here. I mean, because Jennifer Slay is out and about. She's hanging out with the Fourth and John guys at the tailgate lot and all that. So, like, that's a really cool thing to see. Uh, Slays clearly loves his time here. First time ever being a team captain and how emotional he was with all that stuff. So, yeah, he wants to stay here. All these guys want to stay here. That's the thing. Like, Cox taking less money. BG taking less money. Kelsey coming back yet again. They all believe that they can win. They all love playing with each other. And it, it all matters. So when you got a guy that can run the books like this, where you can bring all these guys back, you're not sacrificing the future. You're actually giving yourself a better shot this year. I don't know what you could ask for. I mean, it, outside of another running back that isn't Rashad Penny. I don't know what else you could ask for. <laughs> like Marlon Mack, for instance. Oh, yeah. baby, we're back. <laughs> we're back. He's only 27. Uh, no, it's, well, I'm, is, I'm over it. But. Is there anything you're disappointed in so far? No, I, I have nothing to be disappointed about. I really think they've nailed everything to this point, and there's still so many things left to happen. I mean, who could they trade for on draft night? Who are they going to draft? Guys that are going to be available in free agency after the draft. You're going to have a million things that you can figure out, and then there's always guys that step up and solid role players like, sure, Kaiser and TJ are gone. N'Kobe Dean is about to step in, and I'm excited <laughs> for that. So yeah. I like <laughs> look. I'm, you're Mr. Anti Nicobe Dean, not and I anti, get it. I'm you just, hate him. I don't. It's not even that. I've got high hopes for Nicobe Dean. It's just God. He just really is starting to sound and hear like a. He's just a guy, and that's okay. And he maybe can be he just is. a guy, and he could be a great guy. He could be, you know, a, a, a five year great guy. I just don't see the superstar that everyone sees. But Yet. he doesn't have to be because it doesn't matter, yes, right? Yes, it does now. Why? Yes, it does now. Why? What are you talking about? It's Sean Bradley and him on the roster. I mean, I'm sure Bobby Wagner's coming very shortly. <laughs> um, outside of that, I mean, it's just those two guys on the roster. I don't anticipate them drafting a linebacker either. Uh, and most of the free agent market's dried up. So They're going to have to sign some guys at linebacker. I mean, they just got to get bodies in the door. So I, I don't know if Sean Bradley's going to start. I'm going to hold my breath on that one. <laughs> uh, but... For Dean, it, it really doesn't matter to me because look around. If it is Slay's back, Bradbury's back, you have a defensive line, you still have Reddick, you have Sweat, you have Derek Barnett, John. Uh, there, there's so many great God players. Right. Uh, see? <laughs> so you, you got all the, like, you don't need a linebacker to be a great player. You just need them to not suck. That's, uh, that's all it is. As long as N'Kobe Dean doesn't suck, he's fantastic in my book. Well, there's one thing I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in so far. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is a commander. Not great for, like, less than $4 million. Yeah. Ah! Uh, and then I was like, no problem. Well, that's P.J. Walker territory, and I'm sure him and Sirianni have had a relationship. Zip, boom, bang. He goes to the Bears. So you know what I'm going to say, because I'm talking about N'Kobe Dean in the third round, and I'm still bitter about Ritter. They have to draft a quarterback. If you're not going to take a one-year deal with the two guys that I think are just – the, the base cost of what should be behind Jalen Hurts, then you got to draft a quarterback this year. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Uh, Clayton Thorson. <laughs> Come on down. Come on back. Uh, but is there any, I can't think of another QB that's going to be around the same cost, around the same age, and somebody yep. that is not about to bust out a hamstring. So like, Yeah, Mariota, baby. No, thank you. Mariota, Tyler Huntley is fun, too. No, thank you. As a backup, he's fun. Yeah. I would total. I would take Tyler Huntley in a heartbeat, dude. Yeah. He almost won a playoff game. Like that guy, he's solid, man. He's a totally solid, and he could run a, He could do the stuff that Jalen's doing in terms. You can trust him, or at least you can give him opportunities to do the read options and keep that part of the offense going. I'd let it ride. I I would love to have a guy like him or Mariota. Nothing else is available. Two one five five zero nine fifty eight thirty three or jump on our Discord. Bell to Birdman dot com. Is there anything you're truly disappointed in, or something you want them to go after next? Uh, whether that's uh, in the draft or free agency. Uh, to me, I don't think they need to do anything until the draft now. 
They're, they could probably have some fillers. Um, if you want to go look for a couple of backup guards, I'm game. If you want to uh, look for depth, especially with, like, defensive tackle at this point, I'm with you. Um, but I don't know, man. Safety, like, everything else seems fine, seems very draftable, and I think that's where, you're, where they're going to have to head. My only take from this is they're absolutely not staying at 10. There is no way. And I don't think, in even if they do stay at 10, corner is out, and I would say probably corner is out for the first round. Yeah, oh, it has to be. With, with Slay and Bradbury coming back, and that Bradbury deal is amazing, by the way. That's an unbelievable deal. You, you got to figure, I, I would bet, by the way, a lot of guaranteed money in that deal. Uh, twenty million, I think. At is 30? that it? I think it wasn't. Oh my wasn't god, major. that's that's such a steal. Major. That is such a steal. Like, okay, so that's one of the best deals I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, when, when you've got guys like that, you're not going in the first round. You're probably doing a mid round pick on that if you even draft a guy. Because let's be real, they only have so many picks, and if the top is secured and you have Maddox and whatever, then they might not draft a guy at all, which is okay. So yeah, draft some other stuff, figure it out. Draft your quarterback, I guess. Uh, Hell yeah, baby. Running back in the seventh is going to be a superstar because this class is so loaded. Probably. Everything's yep. good. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel great about it. Typically when you get into these, I'm still a little gun shy on being completely comfortable. Be like, they out, they'll be right back in the NFC Championship game. Or they'll be right back here. I'm still hesitant because history has not been kind to people that have missed and lost the Super Bowl. And then the next year, I mean, you're just as hurt as the team that won, and your fan base is going to give you not as much leniency. So it's, I don't know. I don't know how this year is going to go. I don't think it's going to be dog shit by any imagination. I just have this feeling it's not going to go as well as we think it is. And I don't, I, I, I'm still reluctant to say, like, it's a good thing that this team has a base where it's going to get even better at this point, but it's still only March, so... Yeah, you, you can't be as smooth as it was last year. I mean, they had no major injuries to speak of, and they just blew through the NFC for the most part. They're still the best team in the NFC. I agree with that. Completely. So, yeah, I, I don't see why they can't get back. Um, just other small note, I think the Giants are getting better. <laughs> Darren Waller. I know everybody's, like, saying, well, find a – see, it's like your Rashad Penny uh, argument. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. If he was ever to stay healthy, it's, a, it's an overpay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean – Roster looks pretty good so far. It, they didn't have anybody to throw to last year. Well, they have Darren one guy to throw up. to now. They have <laughs> and he, one. And he caught Except Wondell Robinson. I will say that's yeah, my man. I love Wondell. Um, but uh, I would say the Giants are going to keep getting stronger here. Cowboys are absolutely going to trend downward. Uh, we were probably just a year early on that. Washington's always going to be Washington. I'll never trust them uh, at all, especially while... The team hasn't been sold yet, so yeah. I don't, oh I, man, what a scumbag! Um, San Francisco, I guess, is having a good thing happening to them. Poor Hargrave. Um, I mean, he's making twenty-one million a year, but he just went to the whiniest team I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> he's got his. He's I got think his. He's all right. Right. He's doing okay. He'll be fine. But it's just so funny to be like all this whining and complaining and bitching, and then he's just going to show up in that locker room and be like, "Hey, what's up, losers?" <laughs> uh, well, we're excited to see what. Um, what the draft has for us, and I'm sure that there's some other surprises coming down the road. I still am very confident that 10 or 30 is for a vet, uh, or 31, excuse me. Uh, well, no, 30, right? Because the stupid Miami Dolphins and their naughtiness. Yeah, um, crooks. Uh, I, I have a, I just, I'm just going to say this out loud because I've been saying it in the Discord, and I just want your opinions on this. The Rams say, give us both first rounders. We'll give you Donald and Cup. I'm pretty much saying, I don't think you can say no. Can you? <laughs> well, you probably get Donald for uh, no. a year, and then he's like, all right, I'm retiring after that. I'm done with this. But you get Cooper Cup for I, two firsts. I would consider two firsts for either of those guys individually. Well, people are yelling at me. They're saying, like, there's no way you would trade Cup for 10 with this team right now. I would. Wouldn't you? I mean, he'd be an absolute superstar. Yeah, he's he's one of the best receivers. He had a triple crown. Like, <laughs> that hasn't happened since Steve Smith in, like, 2001. Yes, I'd like, I mean, you don't need to do it. <laughs> so, it, there's only so many passes either. you can throw in a game. But if I don't you're know, saying Taylor, both. Is that, is that way too fantasy Madden land here? I mean, they're not going to say yes to that anyway, nor do I think. Eagles would have the cap room to take on Cups. I was going to say, I, but, I don't um, think the money works out in 
But I mean, I'm sure it, Howie yeah. could find a way if he really wants it to happen. Yeah, so. I don't know. He could have know. eight void years and and none of them will matter and whatever. But yeah, I like so I don't believe in the scenario at all. But yes, I would take it in a heartbeat. You kidding me? Is there anything that you could imagine like that happening on draft night again, or is that just too expensive? I just, I don't know why. I just I don't think they're gonna. There's not a. Who's trying to sell that pad? I don't know. I mean, if you that's that's uh we'll besides make it, the Rams, we'll I make guess. it everybody's job. If there is a potential twenty four to twenty seven year old something that you're like, John, you're missing the, missing the boat right here. I'm all for it because I I don't see it right now with the draft pick. All right. Uh, the only scenario I can think of is Lamar stays on the market. It comes to draft night. A team says, you know what? We made it this far. We're about to burn the pick. Fuck it. Let's get Lamar. So they trade. <laughs> they trade the two first to Baltimore. And then because of that, whichever team lands Lamar has to offload somebody. And then Howie swoops in. That's like the only, I, I don't know. I don't know I anybody like else that's like, like disgruntled. Yeah. You know, Jesse Bates got a deal, so he's out. He left Cincinnati. Uh, a lot of the tagged guys, I, I just don't think it's that like acrimonious. And, yeah. and I don't know what the, the fit is that the Eagles need. I mean, they've got so many good things going. Well, um, uh, I'm excited to see what happens uh, next regardless. Uh, make sure that you have got all of the Grim Leafer iced tea possible stacked in your fridge for this spring and summer because, uh, one, uh, you need the caffeine. Uh, two, it's not going to give you the jitters like the coffee does. Like, did you hear that? That's from the coffee right there, the, the zip zap. I need some of that. But not only that, I think it's one of the best tasting teas that you can find in aluminum can. And if you just go to liquiddeath.com slash bell, uh, you will see these bad boys, and then that also gets you 20% off of every thing in the liquid death store the merch is outstanding uh we have uh, too much of it in fact the liquid death sweatpants which i know i'm putting on as soon as i leave vince's apartment are sitting nice and folded on my bed right now and carrie told me that they are ready and i specifically requested those because they are the most fucking comfortable sweatpants in the world so 20 percent off liquiddeath.com slash bell and let us know which ridiculous scenario including cooper nut cup for 10 or something like that you could possibly see on draft night. Vince Quinn, Taylor Cardenas, any uh, final thoughts here before we go? Yeah, uh, speaking of merch, Jordan Weaver, I owe you a hat. I'm sorry. I, I will mail it to you. It's uh, It's been on my to-do list. I literally have not worked in the office for like three weeks now, it feels like, so I just <laughs> haven't gone and taken care of it. But I've not forgotten about you. The hat is coming. Same Hang with uh, Alvin and your soda. Thank you for reminding me on that because I just... Alvin, if you're listening, we've got soda coming to you as well. Uh, Taylor, anything? Uh, we're not going to get the Julian Love Giants game anymore. Oh, yeah. What a boo. shame. Where, where do you end up going to, by the way? Uh, he's visiting Seattle. Ah, so. got you. Okay. All right. Hanging out. Sorry, Julian Love. <laughs> Wish we could have seen you, but uh, we will be seeing Juju Smith-Schuster here in a Patriots uniform, if you can believe that, of Ew. all things that happened this week. Ew. Uh, for Taylor Cordatis, for Vince Quinn, I am John Barchard saying... Man, oh man, what a free agency. Let's go win another Super Bowl ring. This is Bell and the Birdman. Okay, bye.